Hey guys, it's Agnes Dermer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you all more videos. Today I'm pretty excited because I've been experimenting with Magic Leap over the weekend. I wanted to try and see if I could bring in one of my old games that I developed and released for iOS into the Magic Leap platform. So I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that I learned, how do I package, the assets from the old game into the new experience, what kind of template did I use for Magic Leap, and then what was the process like by going through that process. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what I have today as far as the game that I put it over to Magic Leap and I honestly had a lot of fun doing it, so I wanna show you some of the things that I have. So first I wanna show you the app that I have in the store and this app is completely free. I, I'm not saying that you need to download it, but this is basically what I ported over, which is called Tiny Wheels. It's available in the store. And then I'm gonna show you the iOS app as well. So if you look at the project, this is basically a repository that I had in Big Bucket. I, I clone it and then I run it and then I wanted to make sure that everything everything was working. So that's the first thing, like make sure, you know, if you're pulling over an old game, the or app that you work on before make sure that you get it as bare bones as you can so i have some things that weren't compatible anymore with newest versions because i'm using now 2018 that too and this was developed in 2018 so i just basically you know made it as, as bare bones as i could make sure that you get it running once you have everything running and clean then you kind of start thinking about okay what do i need to move over and then that's the kind of thing that i that i did is okay i have a bare bones now, what do I need to do to make sure that it runs? And then that's what I'm gonna show you. So if I hit play, you're gonna see that the game is gonna run. And it's a very simple game. So let me go ahead and hit play. If I hit play, the roads are gonna start gen generating automatically. And then you can see that there's a little bar on the top of each car. I just have to hold left and right to destroy the car. I also will get some bonuses on the, on the road. So for instance, this is going to give me uh, three bullets so now I can just shoot three bullets and then the life is displayed above each of the cars so the cool thing with this is everything is you know getting regenerated so I can go in and get closer and you're gonna see the cars are just spawning and there's explosions so so I thought okay well I have this simple game what if I just bring it into Magic Leap and not because I want to release it on Magic Leap it's because it was a challenge that I did to myself I wanted to see how it would run how it would feel and some of the things that i that i thought about okay what kind of control do i use do i use the controller on the magic leap do i use my hands of the control and i actually decided to use my hands so instead of using the control i'm basically saying thumbs up on the right hand side that will take me to the right if i do it on the left it will be thumbs up on my left if i wanted to shoot it will basically will be a fist on either one of my hands so i think that goal was really cool and and I was able to do it in about two to three hours yesterday and, and I'm pretty happy. So what did I do to make sure to make sure that, that was going to work? And before we go into that, let me show you the let me show you the game running in Magic Leap so you can see what I have. So you can see that my hands are a little bit showing on the under the road. And I'm doing a I'm basically doing a face and then thumbs up. And let's see, so the weather is changing. That's something that was already in the game. I'm shooting, so I have a fist, and then I'm basically moving moving the car around. So if I go to this other video, similar, I'm just looking at the car, looking out, and just shooting, moving the car to the left, you can see it on the left, and I did thumbs up on the right, now the, move, the car moved to the right. And it's a very minimalistic game, but I think it's really cool to, you know, to say I was able to move this and that was my that was my goal for yesterday so so that's how did i start it so like i said i clean everything up and one of the things that i normally do because i've done this with other apps and other games that i bring into magic leap is i put everything into an assets directory so make sure that you have everything in an assets directory and not only an assets directory but also a directory that is named by the what you're going to be bringing into magic leap so what I did yesterday is I moved, everything was under assets. So I created a new folder. I call it the name of the game, call it Tiny Wheels. I moved everything inside and then I make sure that I didn't break anything. Once I knew that it was working, I, cle I did some refactoring, some of the code, make sure that, you know, I wasn't, being, I wasn't bringing in iOS dependencies such as the game center and things like that that are not gonna be compatible. 
So I clean all that up, move it all into this folder, and then the next process is basically going into assets and then creating a package. So this is one of the most important steps is you want to create a package. So I did a package, I did export, include dependencies. It told me to, okay, where do you want to put the package? And I just say, okay, this is going to be tiny wheels export and I'm just going to save it to a location. So I decided to do it on the desktop. So that's everything that I had to do on the old project. So let's go ahead and close it. And now let's go into the, the new project and also know that the this was created. Oh, it looks like it didn't get created for some reason or it hasn't refreshed. Let me go back into the old project just to make sure that I selected the right. So I'm going to go back into that and let it open. I thought I decided I told it to put it in the desktop, but we'll check in here. Okay, let's open it up and then go back into, oh, it looks like Unity quit unexpectedly. So we'll do an export one more time, select the folder that we want to export, and then make sure that I put it in the desktop. So it's gonna be tiny wheels export, and it's gonna gather, I think it finished. Let me make sure that it did finish. And for some reason it did, it's not exporting, or maybe it's still working on it. I think it's still working on it. I just didn't weigh enough. There we go. All right, make sure that you weigh enough and you're not too, you know, exci you're, you're too excited about checking like I am. All right, so I'm gonna close out of tiny wheels. Now that I have a package, now I know I can bring that package into a new project. So what I did is I, I basically went and used a template that Magic Leap had. I downloaded the template that is located in the in their documentation. So if we go to Magic Lib and we go to Creators, I'm gonna put the location of this in your in the description so you guys know it. But we can also find it by going into Learn. Once you go into Learn, go into Develop Unity and then Unity Setup. Getting it's actually under Unity Setup, and they're gonna refer to it in here. So it's gonna tell you about the Magic Leap, Unity Project Setup, blah, 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 blah. Let me see if it's in this location. Yep, Unity Project Setup. And then, so here's the template. I just downloaded it, rename it, added it to added it to Unity. Just like follow these steps because it's gonna really help you in getting going. I'm gonna put the link in the description. So let's go back into Unity, okay. So now this is a project that is based on the template and why was it, why was it easy to bring it on and bring it in? And make it work and you can see that i've been using this project for my other demolition uh, prototype and i did the same thing I, I basically just created a folder look as you can see that is the the name of the other prototype and this one is the name for the one that i'm creating now so if i were to double click in here i'm not going to do it again because it's going to override the files that i have but this is what you would do you would basically import and it'll import under assets which then would show up in here under, you know, depending on your game name, it's gonna be into that folder. And then I have everything here that I needed. So now that I had that, I needed to change quite a bit of things too, because uh, if you notice the, the scaling in augmented reality is in meters. So you wanna make sure that you go a lot smaller than what I originally had. So for instance, on the world I had to, which is, which is an asset that I had in my other game, I needed to go to a 10th of that. Otherwise everything will just be too big. I also did the same thing with the spanners that I have. These are the ones that are responsible for spawning cars. I make sure that the location was right. So I had to do a lot of little tweaks and adjustments on making sure that everything was scaled properly. One of the things that I had to change as well, like if you look at, let's look at the prefabs for the cars. So I have most of those on their vehicles. And I also have controllers, which are gonna be the player. These are player controllers, and then these are the vehicles that are spawning. So if we were to add that here, you're gonna see that the size is okay, but the size that this had was 111. It was it was a monster, right? You wouldn't have you wouldn't have been able to see it unless you were from you were pretty far from the camera. So so I had to change that. I had to change the size and do something smaller. So I did point point zero eight, and that was actually a good size. And and you know I went back and forth and played with the size, make sure that I had the size properly. So I did that with mo most of the cars. And and also the other thing that I had to do, I also had to do that with the controller because this is the controller that is actually spawning the vehicles. And as you can see, the car is also the same size as the other one. So I wanted to make sure that everything was scaled properly. I also wanted to make sure that the velocity that the enemies had wasn't as fast because otherwise 
the cars weren't going to be showing. They were going to be uh, going at a crazy speeds. So if, you, if your scaling goes, goes down, your velocity is going to go down. So for instance, the speed that I have right now, it's point, it's point one, negative point 0.1, and this is actually set to 7 in my iOS game. So I had to change the forces. I had to change also the default. So I have some defaults in the game code. So let me show you that. It's going to open it up. And I had to make some changes to some of the settings that I had. And this completely depends on your game and what you're developing. But if we go here and look at the setting manager, this is just basically a list of static floats and, and strings and different types that I use for, you know, when starting the game. So if I look at the speed right here on the default AI speed, this was set to, it's actually set as the default of negative one. And, and that is actually too fast. I, I ended up changing that. And you, I could have changed it here as well and do negative 0.1. That would have worked as well. But that was one of the things that I had to change to make sure that I wasn't going as fast. So if we go back here, that was the force that I had to apply that I had to apply on the cars. I also needed to do some other changes in order for this to work well as far as like the controllers because I wanted the controller to to work with my hands. So what I ended up doing because this is a quick hack just to make sure that everything works is I went into the Magic Leap examples and I wanted to see how they were doing the hand tracking. So I went in, looked for hands in here, and if we we can probably just search for hand and you'll we'll find it in here. So I went and double click on the hand tracking example. And I knew that they were already using hand tracking and I know that they're already capturing different gestures on the hand. So why develop something new if I need to do a quick prototype? So what I ended up doing is I went into the hand, the hand tracking example. I copy that over and move it over to my scene. So if we go back into my scene, which happened to be here in Demolition CL just because I wanted to go fast. I really had something set up. I went and pasted it here. I just rename it. I did. I removed these spaces, and then I also, you know, I used the same implementation that they had. They already have a hand tracking script. They already had the track key poses that they were they're tracking. I could have just say fist and also thumb because those are the only ones that I'm using. But I think for a prototype, I don't really, I don't really mind having those everything selected. I left this as it is, and also I created a new label under the UI that I had that was going to display the basically the 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 trust that it had on a specific gestures. I think they call it, I'll show you what they call it. I can't remember what it's called on top of my head. Well, we can actually just look at the code and we can see what, for some reason I lost the word, and the confidence. <laughs> so that text box displays the confidence of the gesture so he knows the percentage if it's 60% and my code is looking for 60%, is going to capture the gesture. Otherwise, it's not going to capture the gesture. So that's what I did as far as this. I created a label, and then that label is the one that gets displayed on the UI. I also brought in the logo from the game, and I added it to the head post canvas. So you can do the same thing. Magic Leap has many examples in their examples where they're using a head post canvas. I just added my logo, and they make that very, very small, 0 0.0015. Otherwise, it wouldn't fit. So make sure that you look at the scaling on UI as well. And then I put a little, you know, little instructions in here saying thumbs up on either hand to change to change lanes and do a face to shoot. So those are basically the controls. So now let's look at how I managed to do the change of lanes. And I'm going to advise you and warn you that this is all hack. It's pretty fast code. So it's not to be meant for production. I just wanted to make it work. And, and I did. I made it work. So that's what it matters. So let me show you what I did on the tracking example. So I'm just hacking in the hand tracking example that Magic Leap had. I didn't even bother creating something new. I added three different properties. One is thumb right, thumb left, and then also the fist. So this is a Boolean, a true or false, whether I'm doing, if I'm doing a thumb and it's on my right hand, this is gonna set to true. If it's on my left hand, it's gonna be set to true. And if it's not set, if it's basically, if I'm not doing a thumb, so then this is gonna set, set to false and the same thing with the other hand. And on a face, I do the same thing. If I'm doing a fist, I'm basically sending a true. And if I'm not doing a fist anymore, I'm sending a false. So that's basically what that is doing. So if you look at the implementation here, Magic Leap is already checking for, you know, make sure that the hand tracking is started and also make sure they're displaying the confidence level on the X status text that gets displayed on the UI, I show you that. And then what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, if the key post is a thumb, 
and the key confidence is more than 60%, then I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my, my thumb left. If, if no, I'm going to set it to false. So I'm setting it to true if that it's true, and I'm setting it to false when this is no longer true. I'm doing the same thing with the thumb right, still looking at 60%. And of course, if this was something that we were going to release on the platform, you wouldn't want to do something hacky like this. You would probably want to do, you know, variables to make sure that you're setting those on the through the inspector. Make, 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 sure, make sure that you're, you're doing it in a clean way. If you're doing it for production, don't follow my advice. This is just for prototyping. And then on the on the face, I did the same thing. I'm checking if, if I'm doing a fist and I'm looking at the confidence and I'm also checking if I'm doing that on, the, my, on both of my hands. So I'm doing the left hand and also doing the right hand. So I'm doing an or here because I wanna make sure that it is a face, but I wanna also make sure that I'm doing that either on my left hand or on my right hand. So I set those booleans depending depending on the state. So that's what I did on the hand on the hand tracking. So now if we go to the controller, which is the one that is controlling the car, you can see what I'm doing here on the so I had already some code to move the car, right? Because I'm doing that on the some if it's a Unity standalone OEX, so if it's the Unity editor, I have I'm using the input that get down and then I'm basically looking for keys on my keyboard to move the car to uh, to the right, to the left, and also to move the car to the right. Also, if I'm using, because this was a game for iOS, this will still work for iOS because I'm still capturing and I'm using compiler flags to make sure that I know which platform I have. And what I ended up doing is I just added two different if statements. And in the if statements, I'm saying, okay, if it's the thumb left, I'm moving the car to the left. If it's my thumb right, then I'm moving the car to the right. So that's what I did on the control. The other piece that I needed to do as well that I wanted to do is if I'm doing a fist, how do I actually start shooting if I do a fist? Because in the original game, the car was always shooting. All you had to do is just move that car from left to right. So it's actually pretty easy because all I needed to do is go into the fix update of the weapon manager that I already had assigned. And all I'm saying is, okay, I have a reference to the hand tracking example that I show you guys that I modify. And what I'm saying is if I'm not doing a face, just return, which means that I'm not going to be spawning any of these, any of the weapons that I'm doing here. So I'm shooting a single weapon. I'm shooting a single fast, a double, a triple. And this is all depending on the UI, on the bonus that I get as I'm driving. So if I pick up a three, basically I'm basically shooting three times, which is going to do this one. And I have different enums for you know, whether I'm shooting a single bullet or I'm, sh I'm sh basically shooting a single bullet, but very fast, or if I'm doing a double bullet or a triple bullet or and then, and then and so on. So for this example, all I need to do was just check for that and then add this to the inspector and basically just get that component by looking for that game object and getting the component. So I'm basically not exposing this in the inspector. I'm just getting it through the awake method. So like I said, this is just really fast. So if we go back into Unity and I hit play, we can see that it's going to work. I'm gonna get some errors because I'm not using, I don't have it connected to the simulator yet, but it's going to run. So let's, let's just wait here for just a second. And it's trying to compile everything. And there we go. And as you can see, the game is playing. The head post canvas is working. And I'm gonna to start to see cars, you know, coming my way. And the camera is right over here. Oops, actually, let me go up. And the camera is right here, so you can see, this is what I would be looking at if I'm in augmented reality. So everything is working, and that's basically what I wanted to show you. So most of this code is already, you know, it's already been refactored, and I added some of the components that I'm using in some of the other Magic Leap, Magic Leap experiences. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you have, if you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys. All right guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just did on Magic Leap and bringing in a game from iOS into Magic Leap, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. Also an amazing community and forums that you would really like. Also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.